Amen. Good to see you back this evening. If you will, let's all stand. Take our song books. We're going to turn to page number 29 at the cross. Sing the first and the last verse. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart pulled away, it was there by faith. I receive my sight. Now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well, that's a deep subject for a shallow mind. It's good to be here tonight in the house of the Lord. Uh, Brother Richie told me this morning they probably wouldn't be back tonight because of looking after Brother Kerry. And uh, he told me that he had quit eating and they were going to put a feeding tube in. That's, I think that's kind of, I may not have everything right, but I think that's what it is. And I know I told him when I talked to him uh, Friday, he said that he just lost his appetite. And he was really just eating just just to keep the strength up. So uh, you, you pray for him. And uh, I, I told him, I said, you know, I hope the Lord makes you well, gets you well. Because, you know, you miss folks that's always here. I never did have to worry about him and Diane being at church. He's here every time of service. And when people don't come, that's like real faithful. I catch you sure uh, miss them. Um, we want to pray for uh, Brother Jeff Swift. He called this morning. And he is still sick with that COVID. And Jimmy Hudson's still sick. Brother Claude, we don't know if he's sick or not. I don't know. You don't know either. But he hadn't found out. I say that he hadn't found out the results yet. Hadn't heard heard the results from his test. So let's pray for him. And uh, anybody got any special prayer requests? It's a wonder he didn't break a hip. I ain't worried about your head. <laughs> yes, sir. Your mother's going to have hip teeth. Pray for Wayne. Boy, he's got his mom and Alan. Who's taking care of Alan? You? Okay. The community, all right. All right, that's Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, all right. Let's pray for that. It seemed like there was somebody else, but I cannot think of it right now. Got cancer, isn't she? And Miss Elaine back there, glad she came back tonight. She had to leave this morning. And uh, sure glad to see you here, Miss Elaine. I ain't been past you about 400 years, so I, I've always known when you're well, you're here. And so I saw her get up after Sunday school and leave, and I said, well, she just can't take the preaching anymore. So, so I ran out there right quick, and she said, no, and she has that leg trembling whatever it is leg and she went home to get her medicine so but i'm sure glad that she's here tonight all right brother hills back here's got a collection of thimbles for sale miss mill has got a new quilt she just made for sale don't you go over and beg her off i i treated her like i did my mom and i just don't like folks that try to jew you down when you make a quilt, that's not talking about an hour job. That's talking about hours of jobs. And what do you call that quilt? Morning glory. Morning glory. All right. All right. So she does that sitting at the house. That's good to do that. Brother Hill, would you pray for us tonight?
All right, be seated while the best choir.
Now, the reason I advertise that quilt, Miss Millie said she'd give me 10% of what I got out of it. So, y'all be sure and buy that quilt. I need the money. All right? No, she didn't. I like to pick at her. She is a good woman, I guess. As far as I know, as far as I know, she's a good woman. Well, let's, uh, let's pray for all those that are sick, and then also uh, pray for the service Wednesday night. We've been having a pretty good crowd on Wednesday night, and I work hard. I'm going to start off in the morning studying. While Francis has gone to exercise, I'll be studying. And then uh, we'll be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be here on time, and let's really pray. I've got a message I'm going to preach about the wounds the wounds of Jesus. So uh, anyway, uh, try to be here. No, try to be here. Be here, all right? If you're physically able, you ought to be in the house of God. All right, let's stand while the ushers come and we'll receive our regular Sunday night offering. Now, next Sunday night, uh, we'll have communion, but also we'll have a singing. And all the groups in the church, I want y'all to practice up, get ready to sing. Uh, at least two songs. I think at least two songs. And so Miss Millie's going to sing. Francis said Miss Millie's going to sing. Is that right? Nate, don't be missing our surprise. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Jesus. I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, forgive me, Father. I have sinned. Did you know that? You don't know, do you? Huh? What are we doing? Okay, pray for us. <coughs> Amen. All right. Amen. Well, I don't know if y'all picked up on it, but I'm the one that messed the choir up on it for a song. See, some, sometimes we break between verses and sometimes we don't. And I didn't have my book, and I usually mark my book. So we finished the course, and I'm looking at the book going, I think we break. So I pointed to Gwen, and she followed me and telling her to break. And as soon as, she, as soon as we broke, I'm like, we ain't supposed to break on this song. <laughs> oh, well, we got through it. Page number 127, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Let's sing it out. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take Him at His word Just to rest upon His promise Just to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I've proved Him more and more Jesus, Jesus Precious Jesus, all oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, save your friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. All right, you may be seated. Remember back to Bethel Camp meeting two weeks, April 15th and April uh, 22nd and August, I'm sorry. What did I say? April. Oh, my mind really jumped the track, didn't it? Good grief. I know what it is. August and April start with A's. So I started out with April. I can't, you know. But anyway, good to be here. Well, Miss Linda, y'all got a big crowd on your side over here tonight. This crowd over here, they're going to have it like church is going to be a whomping job. But anyway, uh, be here. Let's uh, really pray God to meet with us in a special way. Uh, I was, uh, I meant to mention, if I don't write everything down, and I got a list, I didn't write a list. I went down to see Brother Keith and Miss Joyce, and of course she was here this morning, but she's been to every kind of doctor that she can think of, and they say they can't help her. And she's got a buzz and a ring in, in her head all the time. 
And now they said maybe she get a hearing aid so that she can turn it up and the loud noise will drown out the hearing. But I don't know, that don't make a whole lot of sense. But anyway, look like, look like somebody would know what to do. I, I believe sometimes if you're over 65, they just kind of say, well, we ain't got time for you and we're just gonna send you home. That's why I go to naturopathic doctors. They, they like to take care of me or like to take my money anyway. All right, let's stand. Shake hands with a half a person. Anybody under 20, all right? Or uh, what I mean is a kid. That's what I mean. Shake hands with the kids right now. Or those that are child in their mind. play a song is that what I heard you say well come on oh when I can't ever understand what he says but anyway he's gonna play a song next Sunday night on the P Nana or something banjo or blow a jug or something all right how many's got a Bible all right I want you to take your Bible and let's open up the Word of God and I'm gonna preach tonight but I got a long way to go Why not do things different every once in a while? I thought about having Sunday school at 11 and preaching at 10. So I'd get all this crowd that won't come to Sunday school. We can get them in on the preaching. Oh, I want them on Sunday school. I mean, but anyway, people do what they want to do. My boy Andy just got back from Florida. And he has uh, taken flying lessons for drone. He's going to spray fertilizer, spray for bugs. And uh, I think he make about $20 an hour just labor. And uh, this guy said, I'll buy the drone if you'll fly it, and we'll split the profit. I said, well, fly that thing down here, and I'll learn how to fly it. But anyway, but anyway they're going to do that out there. All right, let's stand up. In the book of First Thessalonians, this was the first book that Paul ever wrote. Now, you can't go by... Genesis, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, like that, because Colossians, because that's not put in chronological order. Uh, Paul, when he got saved, the first book he wrote was the book of 1 Thessalonians. Notice what the Bible said here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. In verse 13, if you ever come to a funeral I preach, by the way, remember Gene and Patricia Staten? He was one of my deacons when I was in Galilee, and his boy... Michael died this week, 52 years of age. And so uh, you really pray for that family, all right? 52 years of age. Isn't that the age of Andy or Gwen? 52. And if Gwen don't get a hold of her diabetes, you may die before me, Gwen. It's serious stuff, isn't it? Pray for Gwen. My favorite daughter that comes to church here. <laughs> what did they say? Preach. Oh, and preach, all right. Well, I was going to give you a family history. You know, it's just might as well. Can we just give the invitation? Just come on and pray. 
reason is I want to preach is I haven't eaten yet. All right. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. He says that several times in the Bible. A lot of ignorant brethren. But there's a comma after that, so it's not talking about ignorant brethren. So I would not have you be ignorant, comma, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we do, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For we, or this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Prevent is an old English word means proceed. Said so we're not going to go out before them. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the Baptist shall rise, I mean the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And then guess what? We'll meet the Lord. We're going to meet our loved ones before we meet the Lord. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. He's talking about the rapture of the church. Father, I pray that you'd help us tonight. And Lord, I don't want to just come and spin my wheels and waste a lot of time. But Lord, I want to have a message that'll help us in these dark days that we're living in. And I believe, Lord, the only thing that really encourages us is to know the Lord's coming back. And I believe you're coming back real soon. I really do, Lord. And I, I believe it could be in this generation that you could come. Father, I pray now that you'd help us Help those tonight that are sick, that's home. Lord, not able to come to the house of God, like to come. Then I pray, God, for those that are backslid, that should come, but they're not coming. And I pray, God, that you bless all these that are faithful to the house of God. And I pray, God, pour a double blessing on them for being here tonight. Amen. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. I want to deal with the rapture of the church. Now, I preached on the second coming. I don't know how many times... Uh, through the years, I've got messages on the, on the second coming of the Lord. But I want to deal with that one word, rapture. The one word, word, rapture. And I said this morning that Dr. Hyman Appleman said, an old Jew that got converted, he said, there's either retribution, revival, or the return of the Lord. I sure hope it be the return of the Lord. I don't know all about how God's going to take us out of here. I don't know how God's going to change our body and raise the dead. But I believe it. And the reason I believe it is because the Bible says we're going to be raised from the dead. Now, you know, Paul got saved. And if you study Jewish history, Paul was in line to be the next rabbi in Jerusalem. He's going to be the head rabbi in Jerusalem. I mean, he was taught by Gamaliel. I mean, he could speak five languages. He knew all about the doctrine of the Jew and their history. And so uh, here's a man that was going to uh, be the head rabbi in, Jer in Jerusalem, and he was the chief persecutor of the Christian. The Bible said he went through them like a wild hog, tearing up the ground, trying to kill everybody that he can. But on his way one day to do that, the Bible said he was struck down by a light from heaven. And on the ground he said, "What, Lord, what would you have me to do? It didn't take him long to get converted. I mean, I mean, you get under the fear of God. You have, if you fear God and fear dying, you won't have much trouble getting saved. But anyway, he was gloriously saved. And then they tried to kill him. They tried to kill Paul. I mean, he escaped a death threat by going out a window. And then the Bible said he hightailed it to Arabia. And he went over and spent three years in Arabia. Uh, out there in a desert. The Bible said in a desert in Arabia. The Bible said in Galatians 1, 17, he said, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Three years he spent out there in the desert. He spent three years in the desert. And then according to Galatians 4, 25, he was at Mount Sinai in Arabia. Now, you know what? They have discovered where the real Mount Sinai is. They have for years Said it was one place, and I found out that it's in Arabia, and they said that they may open up that country and let people go to Mount Sinai and see the place where God gave Moses the two stones with the Ten Commandments written on them. 
And then he gave them the instruction to the tabernacle. Now it's amazing to me when I study that, what God did and what God said. When God got ready to give Moses the instructions of the tabernacle, he sent him to Mount Sinai. And when God got ready to give the instructions of what the church was supposed to do, he sent Paul to Mount Sinai. And so both of them went to Mount Sinai to get instruction from the Lord. Excuse me. Get instructions from the Lord. So, now I'm just saying tonight that God has a way of telling us the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And I'm glad everything God does is always correct. I, to me, when I saw that uh, Moses went to Mount Sinai to get instructions for the tabernacle, and then Paul went to Mount Sinai to get instructions for the church, there's a great God that had his hand in that, and God was correlating all of that together. Now let me give you some things. I'm talking about the arrangements of the rapture, and then I want to talk about uh, the applications of the rapture. It's amazing to me that Paul, the first book that he wrote was 1 Thessalonians. And he wrote over there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of archangel, and the trump of God. And then he talks about that we're called up together to meet the Lord in the air. Now Paul uses a word that's not in our Bible, rapture. Cigarettes are not in the Bible either, all right? But rapture is not mentioned anywhere in the New Testament. But if you study about it, we found out the word caught up is translated from a Greek word, harpazo, H-A-R-P-A-Z-O. And harpazo is a word that means caught up. And the word rapture actually comes from the Latin version of, of, of the Greek. And it was translated, and in that Latin version, they came up with the word rapture. So the word rapture is not in uh, the King James Bible, but the definition of rapture is in the King James Version. Amen? So Paul, in his first book, talks about the rapture of the church. But then in his book, he also gives us uh, his belief about the rapture of the church. This word harpazo is translated four times, uh, caught up, and it's right in his writings. Notice what the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 12, 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth such a one caught up into the third heaven. Now I believe that's when Paul was stoned down there at Lystra, and he didn't know if he was alive or didn't know he was dying or if he died. and He didn't know if God brought him back to life. But he said, I'll tell you one thing. During that experience, I was caught up into the heavens. He was raptured up into the heavens. That's the word harpazo. And then in 2 Corinthians 12 and 4, uh, he writes this. How that he was caught up into paradise. The same man was caught up into the third heaven. And the same man was caught up into paradise. So what does that tell us? When a man dies today in this dispensation, he goes to the third heaven, he goes to paradise. And nobody's walking on the street of gold today. I'm sorry, but that's just not good doctrine. But Paul was caught up into paradise. And he said, I heard unspeakable words which are not lawful for a man to use. Now notice this. Paul said, I died, and I was caught up into paradise. I was caught up in heaven. And he said, I heard things I can't speak. Now here's what I say. I believe that anybody dies and then they come back to life and they tell you about all these after-death experiences, they are having something that God wouldn't allow Paul to do. You say, well, what do you think they did? I think they were probably under drugs. Or they lied. And they're no Paul said, I couldn't tell you about those words that I heard. And he couldn't tell you about heaven because if God wanted anybody to, uh, to tell us about heaven, I believe it had been Paul, right? And so Paul here said he was caught up in the third heaven and he was caught up in paradise. In 1 Thessalonians is our text tonight. He said, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And that word is harpazo. Caught up in paradise. Caught up in the heaven. Caught up in the air. Caught up together. All of them are translated from that one Greek word, harpazo. And the only other time is in Revelation 12, 5. Four times in the Bible that word caught up has been translated. And the Bible said that she brought forth a man child. The she there is Israel. And she brought forth a man child. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. 
which shall rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was called up unto God unto the throne. Now what does that mean? That Jesus was born, they crucified him, but he, God raised him from the dead, and then the Bible says on the Mount of Olives, he was called up into, uh, unto God into the throne. So in all of those four places, the Greek word harpazo, it talks about being transported from one place to another. Paul said, I was caught up in the paradise, I was caught up in the heaven. He said, we'll be caught up together and meet the Lord in the air. And then the, uh, the man-child, Jesus, was caught up uh, out of the Mount of Transfer, uh, Mount of Olives. So every one of those four, four places talks about being transported from one place to another. Now, if you want to do some good word studies, there's two books I could recommend. One of them is W. E. Vine. Uh, word studies, and the other one which I like better is Kenneth Wiest. And Kenneth Wiest is probably the better of the two, and uh, they two together tells us that there's four different applications to that word harpazo uh, in the Bible. Now you say, what is that application? When I say about application, I'm talking about definition. If that word harpazo talks about be caught up, the first application means to carry off by force or to snatch out quickly. When we're raptured, he's going to take us by force. He's going to take us out of here real quick. So the Bible tells us that we're going to get out of here in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, about one sixth of a second, we're going to be gone. Uh, but the Bible says here uh, that we're caught up, and it means to take by force. Now, if, if we're going out of here in the rapture, and God's going to take the church out through the rapture, He's going to take the church out by force. I thought that was real interesting. Why and how does God take the church out by force? It's because there's three heavens. There's a heaven where the birds fly. There's a heaven where the star and the moon are. And then there's a third heaven where God dwells. In the second heaven is where the devil dwells. And the Bible said in Ephesians 2, 2, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. So Satan, between the first heaven and the third heaven, is dwelling in the second heaven. You know what he's doing? He's resisting. He's resisting. You say, what does he resist? He resists our prayers getting through. Remember when Daniel had prayed and asked God to help him? And the Bible said in Daniel chapter 10, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, three weeks. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So here's what I get from that. If Michael, the archangel, had to come and help uh, Daniel get a prayer through because the prince of Persia was sent, you know what I believe? I believe the prince of Persia is another name for the devil, for Lucifer. For Lucifer. So here God came with an answer from heaven uh, back to Daniel. And here this prince withstood him. But Michael intervened and came and helped him. And he said, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now listen, we have a battle with the devil. I told you that lately I've had a real struggle. seemed like a spiritual struggle uh, with the devil. I, you know about a lot of things. and uh, uh, But you know the Bible said in Ephesians 6 and 12, thought we, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, but against spiritual wickedness, but against worldly, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now the Bible said between us and heaven, there's a second heaven where the devil, and there's demons in that second heaven, according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, that when the Lord comes back to get to church, he's going to have to snatch us Take us by force to that wicked spiritual territory. But I'm glad you want, I'm glad of this one thing. The devil's not going to stop us from going to heaven. Amen. And he's going to take us by force. And he's going to make the devil move aside. And he's going to take us through. That's one application of the word rapture or harpazo. The second application for called up or harpazo means to rescue from danger or destruction. The word rapture means that God is going to rescue us from danger or destruction. Now you say, what is that danger? Well, according to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, Matthew 24 and 21, 
And Revelation chapter 6 through 18 is the great tribulation. That is the danger or destruction that we could face if the Lord did not come back and get us. In fact, those days are going to be so bad. They're going to be seven years of great tribulation. And the Bible said in Matthew 24, 22, and except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. In other words, it went more than seven years. There won't be anybody left. If you look in the Bible, a third dies here, a third dies there. And God said if he didn't shorten the days, there'd be nobody left. But you know what God's going to do? I'm glad he's going to take us out before the tribulation starts. Oh, yes. I want to just say something. If you're here and you believe this, you just don't believe right. But I'm glad we're not going to go halfway through the tribulation. That's called the mid-tribulation theory. And we're not going to go all the way through the seven years of tribulation. That's called the post-tribulation theory. But I'm glad like Brother Samuel Allison used to preach, we're not even going to say one second of the seven years of great tribulation. You say, preacher, how do you know we're not going to go through the tribulation? That's because the Bible says we're not going to go through the tribulation. And I don't care what some doctor or professor says. If the Bible said we're not going to go through it, I take the word of God. You say, well, where does it say we're not going to go through the seven years of tribulation? I'm glad you asked. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the salvation, there's not a salvation from hell, but a salvation from the wrath of God. And all the way through the Bible, in the book of the Revelation, a tribulation is called the wrath of God. In fact, I started counting them today. There's several, maybe a dozen places in Revelation that the great tribulation is called the wrath of God. And the Bible said in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10, What are we waiting around for? And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. You know, before there's one second, those seven years of tribulation, we're going to be called out of here. God's going to save us from the wrath to come. We're not going to go through the great tribulation. There's a third application. And the third application means this. Divine power transferring a person from one location to another location. The rapture means God's going to deliver us from the wrath of God. The rapture talks about how that God's going to save us. But the third application means that God's going to transfer us and transport us from one place to the other. That's proven in the Word of God by type. Now, typology is not always a proof of good doctrine, but sometimes doctrine can be proved by type. And there's four people that were transferred, raptured, caught up from one location to another, location to another. One of them is Enoch. I'm working on a message about Enoch. In Genesis 5, 24, Enoch walked with God and he was not. The Russians got cosmonauts. We got astronauts and God's got a was not. The Bible said, and Enoch walked with God. He was not for God took him. For God took him. Is that right? And the Bible said by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. God took him from one place, one location, to another location. Second person in the Bible is a type of the rapture is the man Elijah. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. Elijah was caught up by a whirlwind and went into heaven. And I always thought he got on that chariot, but the Bible said he was caught up by the whirlwind, all right? So Elijah was caught up by a whirlwind, and it was translated. Elijah was caught up by a whirlwind, but then the third person in the Bible is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Acts 1 11, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven. So Jesus was raptured. Jesus was caught up. Just like Enoch, just like Elijah, the Lord Jesus Christ was raptured from the Mount of Olives and he's going to come back to the same, same mountain. Now, you say, well, how far is it from here to the third heaven? I don't know how many light years there is between here and the edge of the second heaven, but the third heaven's on the other side. I just, back in Union County, we used to call that a long way. That's a pretty good way. But you know, when you read in the book of Acts, 
And Stephen's dying. You know what he sees? He sees Jesus standing. And Stephen, he saw him, Paul saw Stephen and Jesus standing together in heaven. Now, it don't sound like it took them billions of years to get there. But I believe just like that, they were seated in the heavens. You know, I like to study history, but I also like to study science. I get amazed a lot of times at the science channel, and they'll be talking about black holes. Now, now here's what scientists say. Scientists say that if you get close to that black hole, that you'll be sucked into it so fast, and before you can, in a minute, you'll be on the other side of the black hole in a separate universe altogether. And they say that it's instantly, it's in the twinkle of an eye. You can be caught into that next universe. You're taking one place to another place. Amen? You know, uh, what did they say instantly? Well, the Bible said in the twinkle of an eye. Then you know, everybody that dies and comes back, like to say, has seen a tunnel with a light at the other end. God does not call it a black hole. God calls it a way out. Yeah. Praise God, I'm glad we're going to out of here just like that and quicker and swifter than the twinkling of an eye and we're going to be on the other side and wouldn't it be something and I'm telling you I don't know and I know a lot of this is a conjecture but I read several years ago that they looked into that black hole and they saw something real bright way back yonder and it was head this way I want to pass the new Jerusalem just chew on that this week okay just chew on the fat this week. Amen. But I want to tell you something. So uh, we see here that all these people, Enoch and Elijah and Jesus, and then we have Philip. Philip is a type of the rapture. The Bible said in Acts 39, 8, chapter, verse, chapter 8, verse 39, And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. You say, how far away was that? 94 miles. Wouldn't it be good to get on a plane and travel that fast? But he got 94. Now, I read where he, if he had walked that 94 miles, it would have took him four days and three hours. And he was taken from that eunuch to Azotus just like that. He was transported from one place to another place. I sound like the rapture of the church, don't I? Amen? But the fourth application for this is to claim for oneself eagerly. The rapture of the church is somebody claiming something for himself eagerly. You know what Jesus said in John 14? One of our favorite scriptures at, a, at a funerals. But he said in John 14, 14, 3, And if I go and replace, prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That means he claims us for his own self. The Lord is going to rapture us out to himself. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, So shall we ever be with the Lord. He's going to rapture us so we can be with him. Amen. So you take all of these four applications and you combine them together. And it means to snatch and take away from danger. Now, you know you got classical Greek. And you got Koine Greek. Koine Greek is in the language of the average Greek person that's alive today. And if you go to some Greek restaurant or some person, and there's one right down here, uh, I like to talk to her once in a while that runs a restaurant. And you know what? If you ask that person in modern Greek, what is that word harpazo in the modern Greek language? And he said, they say, you ask any Greek, and they'll say that word harpazo is a picture of a child playing in the street. And there's a large truck coming down the street. And before that large truck runs over that little child, Mama runs out there and grabs him by the hair of the head and snatches him to safety. I'm glad before the tribulation sets in, I'm glad God's going to snatch us to safety. Amen? And so the coming of the Lord to rapture the church is quick and sudden. People won't have time to repent. You know what I heard a dummy say? Well, I hear a lot of dummies, but I'm, you know what I heard a lot, I mean, a theologian say, and he believes you can get saved after the rapture. And you can't be saved after the rapture. But I want to give you what his interpretation says. He said the coming Lord, he said, is, is going to be the moment when you're He said, 
going to be the shout, going to be the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. And there'll be enough time in there for you to repent. Well, here's the one thing I'd like to ask this Marty. If you're lost, how are you going to distinguish that it's the shout of the Lord? Amen. How do you recognize that shout? Well, I, I recognize. Well, you know what? The Bible kind of contradicts that argument. The Bible said in, uh, over there in John 12, 28, Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Now notice this. Then the people therefore stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. And others said, an angel spake to him. So they couldn't even get it straight way back then. And so if a person's lost, they will not know that that's the shout of the archangel, the trump of God. They don't know that. And well, how do they know that it's God? But I'm going to tell you something. If, you're, if, if the trumpet sounds, the voice of the archangel, all that comes together, you don't have time to get saved. And can I just say something? If you wait that long, you're not going to get saved. Anybody that's heard the gospel and is not saved and misses the rapture, they're going to die and go to hell. You say, the Bible said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11, this same man writing the same book, for this cause God shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So I'm just simply saying, before the rapture takes place, it'd be, good, it'd be a good choice to get saved by the good grace of God. Well, I'm, can I just say something? When he shouts, I'll know his voice. When he blows that trumpet, I've heard that sound before. <laughs> and I may be dead, but I'm a, the dead in Christ shall arise. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the Lord. And here it is, people that's dead in the grave, they're going to come up about that height. And we that are alive, we're going to go up together and meet the Lord. And we're going to meet our loved ones before we ever see Jesus. Yeah. Won't that be a blessing? Yeah. Amen. Good night. God bless you. Oh, I said good night. God bless you. I said turn to genera- Genesis. Let's preach in this something. All right. Aren't you glad you come and get surprised at bright light? What does harpazo mean, Francis? By the hair of your head.